it's the number one selling pre-workout across all of the companies. So all across the from GNC, Vitamin Shop, yep. Walmart, all of it, we're the number one selling pre-workout on the market. Nice. And that's third party data. People can yep. look and see yep. that it's not us saying it. In fact, when we go and approach a company like uh, Shills or uh, Kroger's, we say, hey, look, this isn't us saying it. You can see the sales that yep. are happening. Yep. So they actually look at that data and then they are ver it's verified data. We're here. What's up, Jets? Bro, I walk in and I see you drinking our co competitor's <laughs> drink. This is like a curse word. You, you think bucked up is all close to a curse word. You're about to hear the real thing. Listen, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like, <laughs> I was really embarrassed when you came in, but you didn't bring a drink to replace I know. it. Come on, I yeah. know. But I will say, I will. Let me see, let me see this one. There's a little bit left. It's mostly backwash, but I'm yeah, going to yeah. <laughs> Now I know you're a true bro right there. I mean, the, the this is Rocket Pop. It, that tastes a hundred times better than this. Does it? The question is, like, this actually tastes kind of shitty. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I'm not. I'm not trying to hate on Celsius, but it's not. It's not a good tasting drink. Is the okay, ingredients? We'll pay you later. We'll pay. Is the ingredients between the two comparable? Is yours cleaner? Is theirs cleaner? Like, I think people want to know that. They're pretty similar. I mean, we we concentrate on focus. Uh, real focus, real energy, and we we come up with the best ingredients possible uh, that that have had some studies behind them, and we put clinical ingredients in them. Yeah. So I, think I don't know. We don't really pay attention to the competition. We're trying to innovate and be ahead of those others. Yeah. Amazing. And how's that going? Seems to be working out so far, so good. Working. Where do you get like you, you categorize this as an energy drink, as a health drink? What's the uh, category? performance energy? So there's traditional energy, which you'll have like a monster or a Red Bull, and then there is like a bang, rain, and performance energy. And so we're going into the performance yeah. energy categories. You launched this drink t a, a few years ago, two years ago. Well, yeah, in 2019, we decided, hey, let's come out with some energy drinks. And we said, let's launch it at FitCon, which is a huge event here in Utah. <laughs> and so we got 200,000 cans made. Amazing. And we were like, hey, we, we come out with four flavors. Let's go. This is going to be awesome. Well, when we got the drinks, this was the first time that we've ever had someone actually say something bad. I, had a, I saw a post after FitCon. A guy posted on Instagram and said, I've been a huge fan of Bucked Up and all their flavors. Everything's always tasted good, but this is the first time I've been disappointed. And I immediately called everybody and said, destroy them all. If they've gone out, get them back, do whatever, bring them all back. And we destroyed every single one of them. We literally took them out and shotgun did a photo shoot of yeah. us shooting them all and running them over with trucks and everything. We made the most of it, but we dumped oh my every gosh. single drink. We, Dude, we said we have yeah. one shot at energy drinks, so it has to be our best foot forward. And so they have to taste really good. We said, hey, nine out of 10 or 10 out of 10, we can't go anything less. Well, you guys have always been known, like, I mean, we'll get into this today, but you've been known as like the best tasting supplement company in the world. And so that's like right. to, to do anything that's not at that mm -hmm. standard is probably pretty awkward. So did you actually, you obviously tasted the drinks and something was off. So here's what happened is when we were taste testing these drinks, everything tasted really good. We didn't realize that after five days, a masking agent that covers the ingredients, some of the bitter ingredients that are in it, because some of these ingredients that are really, really good, sometimes they taste really, really bitter. And sometimes they go in capsules, sometimes in powders, but our flavor guys were so good. But we thought, oh, we got a winner. Well, we didn't realize that that, that masking agent falls off. And in fact, it took us almost a year to figure out what was actually wrong with our energy drinks. And we didn't release energy drinks till mid 2020. Wow. Okay. So you've only been to market now, what's that been three years? Technically, well, with the energy drinks, we started late 2020, uh, 2021, we sold about 4 million cans, 2020 over 20 million, uh, 22, we sold over 20 million cans. And this year, how it works is you kind of already know what you're going to sell this coming year. Yeah. And so we are going to sell 50 million plus 
energy drinks. Where does that put you against the competition? Well, we're, we're climbing. You know, we have competition calling us saying, hey, we're seeing you where we don't want to see you. So Amazing. it's a good thing. We keep taking market <laughs> share from, from each of these individuals. And we have these third-party spins data that people, yep. they collect this data and they share it with the world. And people keep seeing us jumping over other competitors. And so we get a lot of people a little worried yep. about us, but we, we can't focus on any of the competitors. We have to focus we're, on ourselves and focus on our own company and, and try to stay ahead. Right you know? now we're super, super focused. Ne we've, we've never worked harder in our lives and we work really, really hard. We have some competitors that have started supplement companies that have been local guys and we'll tell them exactly how to do it, but it's coming down to actually putting in the work to make it yeah, happen. Yeah, you got to execute and so, at the end of the yeah. day, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but it's it's going so really well. There. So so you guys are mostly focused now. Is the by the way for those who haven't figured it out, two the two owners have bucked up. They're twins, Jeff Gardner, Ryan Gardner. You guys are focused on uh, the energy drink more than the rest of your products no. now. Are the rest of those kind of on autopilot or how do you? Think no, about we it? look. One thing that bucked up is known for is innovation, right? And we always have to be innovative and we're coming out with some new stuff that nothing has ever been seen like it on the market. Right now we're next week, we actually launched the golden tubs. We have golden bucked up, uh, bucked up gold and woke AF gold and they're golden tubs. And we produced about 50,000 of them. And we are actually putting golden tickets inside like Willy Wonka style. And people can win everything from, you know, $50, you know, a cash, $50 cash all the way up to going on our ambassador cruise that we take every year. Where do people buy this? So they buy it at GNC. So it's only going to probably last for about a couple week. weeks. Yeah. Like maybe at a week most. or two. Dude, why not like all a those day. bottles of what, what if, what if you sold them all in a oh, day? Oh man, it would be sick. <laughs> Is it, hold on, you have to go into GNC or you can buy yeah, it online? You, no, you have to go into GNC and buy. We gave all 50,000 bottles to GNC. Why'd you do that? Because they prepaid. <laughs> and they said, okay, we'll do it, and we'll prepay for all of those, and we want 50,000 bottles. And we said, okay. Whoa. So you think that's a better strategy than selling them direct on buckduck.com? Uh, no, no. It doesn't mean that we can't do that later. We're going to see how well this goes. Yeah. And then we're going to provide some other value behind it that make them a little bit more unique, like doing custom Nike shoes or doing custom uh, pieces of artwork or whatever, kind of like an NFT style, but we're probably just going to come up with some really creative prizes that's so unique to the market Crazy. and do them on our website, do them at vitamin shop, GNC, Walmart, even we're going to figure out ways to make this. Really so good. if this one works really well on the next one, could you say, Hey, we're going to do a hundred thousand of these gold bottles and the prize is going to get bigger. And the next one's going to be, we want to keep 200. making it bigger and bigger and bigger. This first one is with GNC. And that was just to help one of our bigger partners. Um, yeah. We call them a big box. It's one of the big box stores. And we're, we were doing this with them to help drive traffic into their store because they support us. We want to support them. Yeah. And so what we do is uh, we offer this to just GNC buyers this time. But in the future, we'll go to the vitamin shops, the mom and pop shops and other things to activate everybody. Um, but yeah, we do definitely plan on getting this bigger and bigger and bigger and doing it maybe even multiple times a year, maybe. But when Ryan talks about uh, innovation, we also have a product coming out called Pixie Pump. And it's like a pixie stick wrapper where and they tear it off. And some people are taking Rice Krispie treats to keep their glycogen levels up and, and uh, during you know, their work during their workout as they deplete it. So they'll they'll take a, a, a Rice Krispie treat. But we have what we call Pixie Pump. They'll be able to tear it off, pour it in their mouth. It melts it's a powder. right on your tongue. It, it, it melts right on your tongue. And now you have those stores again and you can go hard. And nobody has had a product like this before. So we want to innovate and come up with things that no one has ever seen before. Let's talk about that. You guys, so by the way, I, just to speak on the energy drink, I it was fortunate enough to be friends with Jeff uh, for a few years now. I tried these energy drinks before they went to market. I don't know if you remember that. No, I don't. But I was really <laughs> happy that I got to be one of the first because now it's like soon to be the best selling performance energy drink in the world, which Hopefully is Hopefully after this podcast. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cross um, your fingers. So you guys have always been known to be super innovative guys. It, we will talk about the origin of Bucked Up, but I want to talk about what are the products that you guys 
have come to market with that were totally different than what anybody had ever seen? Um, well, one of them that I can think of right off the bat, we actually won the convenience store product of the year last year with our buck shot. And it looks like a shotgun shell. Yeah. So there are some hesitancies for some stores bringing it in, but they're going to see right now we're doing really, really well against like a five hour energy drink, yeah. L- those little five hour yeah. energy shots. Um, and all the other shots we're doing outperforming them four to five times. And with uh, five hour energy, we're doing about 85% of their volume. So that is a very innovative product that we're bringing to the market that I'm like going, man, that actually turned out really, really well. And it's such a big market for those energy shots. I don't know if you know this, but five hour energy does about 2.2 or $2.3 billion a year. I just want a small, small piece of that. And nobody's ever been able to compete. No one has. So this, this recent feedback that we got where we're, we're out selling all the competitors and we're, we're taking a big market share from five hour is a very good indicator of how we're doing on the market. And we're excited because it just starts, it's starting to take off. Yeah, and we can see this. That's being even a just big. the buck shot. That's just the yeah. energy shot. What are the other? Okay, because I know you've done several. So, are there other ones you want to talk about, like sort of groundbreaking products well, that you've come to market? I with? think what made bucked up. I mean, in the beginning, what made bucked up so big was that we came out and we said, "Hey, we have a game-changing formula." That we said. These are clinically proven ingredients at their clinical dose, and we're going to show you exactly what's in our formula, where before no one was showing what was in their formula. Not only that, is ours tasted better than everybody else's. So not only did it taste great, but when they actually took it, they really could perform. In fact, people were going to the gym and coming back to us and going, oh my gosh, I had the best workout of my life. You are on to something. If you guys know what you're doing, this thing could be a home run. And we kind of knew a little bit about Marketing, marketing. (laughs) Um, Do you have ideas of other products that don't exist today that you can share with the audience that you're thinking about potentially? We have a whole list. We have a whole line of products. (laughs) In fact, we have like we have a whole year of innovation. I was going to say this is the problem. We we hired more and more people to help us support this with our bandwidth but they think we're wild stallions because we keep coming out with new things and they're like you guys hold they're trying to hold the reins on us and now we have to schedule these out and we have a full list of all these new things that we want to come out with and they're trying to structure them so that we get proper launches and that we get the proper setup so that we don't make mistakes because when you go too fast things happen, right? And we start making mistakes on labels. And like so we now just, we have everybody in the right spots, the right place, mm-hmm. and we have to actually calendar them out. And our guy's mm-hmm. like, which one's the priority? And in Ryan and my brain, they're all a priority. Yeah, and we're like, all, go, let's go. go, let's go. <laughs> we actually have, um, we have some innovative pre-workouts coming out, new products with different extracts that are coming out. We have, um, you know, our buck bars. One thing that we did with our buck bars is because we were going too fast, we actually had to do a massive recall because we added too much fiber or raw honey as well. Mm -hmm. And it caused our bars to go hard. And so now we switched to doing instead of fiber and honey, we've switched to date paste, which is really higher in protein anyway, but it keeps the product soft. Right. So we have some buck bars that we're re-releasing um, this next month, but we have a lot of things, including a woman's line uh, for women. Um, you know, majority of our people, probably 65 to 68 percent of the people that are our customers right now are men. And we want to mm. appeal to more women. In fact, at Vitamin Shop, it's even higher. It's like 70, 72 percent are, wi- are men buying our products at vitamin shop and we want to appeal to more of the women. So we're coming out with a woman's line as well. Have you seen just little side tangent? Have you, have you guys tasted this product called bear bells? They're these yes, bars. They're, the bars, the they're bars really are, good. they're off the chart. Yeah. Though. They're really, really good. And they're, and they're really clean yep. too. They taste like yeah. candy bars. I mean, how, they're do, good. how do you, how do you do that? How do you formulate a product that tastes that guy. I mean, you guys have mastered yeah. that on like the pre-workout side and all of your products, but not on the bar side yet, right. I don't think, right? right? Right. And the barbell ones, I mean, I've had them and everybody's telling us, hey, you need to make them like them. 
Uh, we have something very similar, but it's not like exactly like their bars. You know what I mean? But yeah. um, it's pretty tough, especially when you're using, you know, ingredients that really could taste or give it a different taste. Yeah. It's really tough. So it comes down to the people who are flavoring out and adding the right things so that you're not adding too much sugar and you're not adding a whole bunch of calories that people don't want to don't want to have. They want yeah. a clean bar and ours is super clean and it's about 200 calories and it's about a 50 to 60 gram bar and they taste really, really good. Amazing. Who, uh, who does the compounding for all this stuff? Is it the same person that does the bars and the supplements or are no, these they're different? different? They're different co-manufacturers that we work with. So oh. we have different manufacturers for, um, our supplements, different manufacturers for our energy drinks and different manufacturers for bars. And the manufacturers are the ones that like, what, what do you call it? Compound it? Like, yeah, they're called the co, co manufacturers where they bring in all the ingredients, they blend them and then they put them in the bottle. They put, add the flavoring and everything. Else. What's the actual process though, of like coming up with like this exact mm -hmm. flavor? Like, how do you, how do you come up with this? So we have people who help us come up with formulas. Like a We've chemist had, or something? We, we basically chemists. They're in yeah. white lab coats back there mixing formulas. We say, we would like something that tastes like mango. And they'll go back and they'll mix a few of their different flavors. Really? And then they come out and we have like four or five Samples. things to sample. And we all go over to the, and to the place and pick which one tastes the best. Who's we all? You so two? All Me and Ryan. And, and, and we have <laughs> a couple like, guys, a that, couple come guys that come with us because we want to, everybody's palate is a little different yeah. and we all agree upon like, hey, this tastes good. But really what we do is we come up with a formula that we think is a really, really good formula. So we, we go to ingredient shows uh, that like Supply Side West is, a, is one that it happens in Vegas every year where they have all the latest and greatest ingredients. And we try to find those diamonds in the rough. And then we just say, hey, we want to add this formula and this is what we want to. We take a look at all the studies and we say, these are the formulas we want, uh, formula we want. We hand it off to our manufacturer and we say, we want this flavor. And then he flavors it, mixes it all up, and we make sure that we have a good tasting product. And like Ryan said, some ingredients make it taste different. So yeah. we could take the same flavor and put it in something else. If we add other ingredients in there, we have to change the, the flavoring. So we, we have, have to, to dial, flavoring, yeah, dial, we have to it, dial it up, dial it down, and then have it come off the, ton the palate right and everything else. Crazy. It's pretty Cause, complicated. Because you, you also have to like, I think what people don't think about this is you also have to name the flavor. Do you name the flavor before you create the flavor? So do you say, I want to have a rocket pot flavor and then you go do that? Yes. Yes. So like, but some of your flavors are called like crazy stuff. Like, well, we like to juice, play, like, we, we like to play around with it. Like all of our, you know, gym some and of, juice, is yeah, that one of them? Yeah. yeah. Gym, and, gym juice, and juice, pump and grind, you know, things like that <laughs> we try to do. And they're, they're based off like songs and stuff. So yeah. we try to play around with it. We like to make it interesting. <laughs> Can you talk about the the breakdown of sales across your product lines? Like what is pre-workout still the number one selling SKU at Bucked Up? Pre-workouts are still the number one selling SKUs for sure. Is it they the do. number one selling pre-workout period? It's the number one selling pre-workout across all of the companies. So all across from GNC, Vitamin Shop, yep. Walmart, all of it, we're the number one selling pre-workout on the market. Nice. And that's third party data. People can yeah. look and see yeah. that it's not us saying it. In fact, when we go and approach a company like uh, Shills or a Kroger's, we say, hey, look, this isn't us saying it. You can see the sales that yeah. are happening. Yeah. So they actually look at that data and then they are ver it's verified data. It, you know, because everybody could go and say, hey, we're the number one selling pre-workout. Sure. But, but this actually shows it. But pre-workout probably does still 75, 80% of all of our sales. Really? I mean, we're doing 500, 600,000 bottles a month. However, we know of pre-workout of, pre of just pre-workout. We know how big, big the funnel is for energy drinks, right? It's not just fitness people that are taking a, a, an energy drink. It's truck drivers. It's regular people it's going into a workers going into a gas station that can buy this product. It's not just fitness. So the funnel is much bigger. So what we're trying to do is have the energy drinks catch up with the pre-workout. Sure. However, 
we're going now international with the pre-workouts and it's and taken it's off. Big, and it's as big as it's as big as the US. And we, I mean we could do hundreds of millions of dollars just in sales in just supplements. And we just launched in international, like Canada is launching on June first is the first time they're pushing the product. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mexico, close to June 1st, will be pushing the product. Australia, um, UK. The UK e in e June will be pushing. We haven't even touched haven't the even tip started. of the iceberg. <laughs> I mean, this year we plan wow. on, Jeff, Jeff is in charge of international distribution, and he's also in charge of all of our ambassadors, which we have 49,000 ambassadors pushing our product. It, it's actually me? up to 60,000. Oh, sorry. Thank you very sorry. much. Yeah. So that's <laughs> Jeff. Jeff is in charge of all of that, and that's really our army of people what? who go out and promote our stuff. And Jeff can talk more about how that yeah. happened. But, you know, in the U.S., we're doing really, really well, but it's just, we're just barely even on the tip of the iceberg here in the U S in fact, I got in an Uber the other day in New Jersey, I jumped in the car and I said, Hey, take me to vitamin shop. And he's like, Oh, do you have a product in vitamin shop? I'm like, yeah. Um, have you heard of it? It's called bucked up. And he goes, no, never heard of it. And I'm like, that's good. We're just on the tip just of the iceberg. The if they haven't, if they haven't heard it, then I, I haven't done my job yet. Yep. And it's only when everybody hears about it, that's when I'm going to say, now we're getting big. Man, so you got, yeah, you guys are seemingly dominating the pre-workout space in North America, but not just from a product expansion standpoint, but from an international standpoint, you're barely scratching the surface. Oh, it just, just started. It just started this year and it hasn't started yet. And yep. we're still do. we're starting to, we did one order with Canada and it did all more than any of our sales last year international in one order. So we're going to rock and roll with international. And this we year. did about what 500 grand last year. And our goal is to do 10 million just to prove that, hey, outside the U.S., we can really make this grow. 10 million outside. Yes, yes. outside yeah. the U.S. Yeah. Um, so just because we just started, but it's already looking like we'll surpass that. Yeah. What is the <laughs> breakdown of sales by channel, right? And even include like merch in there, if it's worth talking about. So, um, yeah, we can, we can tell you a little bit about that. We didn't want to become, uh, an apparel company. <laughs> in fact, I don't like apparel because you have small, medium, large, extra large, double X, and you fill up a warehouse real quick yeah. with apparel. Yeah. Last year we did about $12 million in apparel and we didn't want to sell apparel. <laughs> and we do some things like where we say, hey, are we actually in the business of selling apparel or is this so that our brand can get out there? Bro, it, when we started, yeah. we, we went to an expo and we're like, how do we, how do we like sell this? And most people were handing out samples like crazy, just throwing like it out to everybody. Like dollars worth of samples. They were just giving them away. But we're so frugal and we came yeah. from Utah. <laughs> like we're like, we're not selling it. This is like this gold. Is gold. This is stuff we paid for. So we actually did a dispenser. And at the time, nobody was doing dispensers. They to were just handing it out. sample our product. So we would say, they would come to us and they'd be like, where's your free samples? And we said, we don't have any free samples to give, but you can go taste it right over here. And they go taste it. And we said, you think it tastes good? Wait till you try it. Yeah. Wait till you feel how good it works. Uh, and then we would have them buy a, a bottle. And we said, if you buy two bottles... We'll give you a free shirt. And Ryan didn't even want to do that. No, I didn't want to give out the shirt. I'm like, there's a five dollar shirt. That costs like eight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's five dollars. And the, I'm like, Ryan, these people are walking billboards now for us, right? Jeff actually did convince me on this. <laughs> and that's how we got into the apparel business. And now we have a girl, her name is Jade, and she's very good at the job, and she keeps coming out with better Unreal. and better so. quality of, of product because we want it to be a brand that people want to wear. You know, one thing is to give it away, but the next thing is to have people wear it all the time. Yeah. And what's funny is we go to the gym, we go just around town, we go everywhere. We see people wearing our stuff because it's good quality. Yeah. So, so my, I took my boys to LA last weekend for their birthdays. They turned 19 and 21. And Man, you're getting we, old. I know. Don't, don't remind me. <laughs> he had kids at 14. But. Yeah. We married young here in Utah. So. No, we, um, so we went to Venice beach. We walk out of our car and me and my two boys all have bucked up shirts on. We walk down and the first people we walk by stopped us and says, are you guys with bucked up or something? 
are they handing out drinks here or are they handing out apparel? Where are they? And we, I said, Hey, I happen to be one of the owners. And they were like, no way. We literally just bought bucked up (laughs) yesterday. And so like that stuff, and we were like, this is awesome. Then we go to muscle beach and there's like six or seven guys that are all coming up to me. I'm the, my boys are like, dad, you're a freaking rock star. (laughs) These people are taking pictures with me. I'm like, what? Starting to be a celebrity. On. Like now people are recognizing the brand oh, yeah. all over the place. Not yeah. just here in Utah where you walk into a gym and you see them all over. Yeah. So you guys may or may not know this, but every time I come to Utah and I visit Jeff, a lot of times we were over at Bucked Up and Jeff's always like, hey, take some. And I always pay for it. I'm always really nice. Four, I appreciate $400, that. I think the last time. <laughs> I, <laughs> but I appreciate I that. Spend, I spend a lot of money on yeah, Bucked Up do. stuff. Um, but I But I do it for gifts, right? So like. Yeah. However, a lot of times I do it on Black Friday because it's yeah, like yeah. even better. I, you get these crazy sales. Which we we'll only talk. do it once a year. We only one discount a year. We it's only the discount our sale. It's we, the craziest sale. We only discount it one time a year, and that is the time. So you're right when you when you load up. That's the day. But you know what that's done is for our brand. That's really really helped our brand. That the oh, one, we only yeah. have one sale a year, yeah. and everywhere else we keep and hold map pricing. Yeah. So even our wholesale accounts, they love us because they can't find it anywhere yeah. cheaper. Yeah. But then on that one week of Black Friday, you just last mop. year brought eighty five thousand sales, and they're all ordering 12, 15 products at a time. At a time. I mean, we did <laughs> how much did you do in revenue? We did over seven million in, in, one, in week. one week. Oh, on my Black gosh. Friday week. That's that's ridiculous. So yeah, it, it's it, printing money. Uh, yeah. Try filling those orders. Try filling those. Orders. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's chaos. It's Dude, easy I, to I've take it. Here. I've it's, been here. I remember. I remember. Like, yeah, it's easy to take it. Not so easy to fulfill it. I think yeah. I sent you like a picture of my order, and I was like, "Hey, dude, sorry yeah. to like add to the chaos." And you sent me a picture back of like your warehouse, like, and there was like a hundred people in there, like I'll crawling all over. Stuff. I'm like, "You want me to add what into what?" I, I'm like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think. Did I ask you to do something? special I, or no, something. I don't remember I feel that. like I, I feel like I might have done that because I remember uh, something happened with the order or something and you ended up I can't remember I'm sure but, yeah. yeah I don't I don't we might remember have messed up on your order too so I, I don't remember that because we were in the sea of, oh, of orders then so I can't even imagine how you get the people to come and do this for a week well you know that seven that is what's special I think about Utah we can actually I mean we have eight siblings yeah we have and we call on our family and their friends and our friends and everybody. And what's so great is everybody's been really, really supportive coming yeah, in, man. helping us fill orders till midnight sometimes. I mean, we're, we're awesome. slaying it, you know, yeah. we're, we're slinging it out there. And what's nice is sometimes these kids have never worked before. They come into the warehouse and they realize, oh, this is how you work. And they're actually developing a skill too. So it's been nice. I mean, even parents have come up to us and says, Hey, that was really special that my kid could come in during black Friday week when they're off of school anyway. And they had a chance to actually work and earn some money for Christmas. That was special. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. So I wear almost still to this day, every day I work out, I wear a bucked up shirt. That's what I'm talking about. Every, every time. Let's and, go. But it's not cause like, look, it, it's not cause I'm like a loyal friend, by the way. Like I am, but it's like, it's, it's actually, once again, we'll pay you on the side. It's actually because I love the shirt, right? Like the quality of the shirt. That's what I'm telling you. When we first did this, we said, Hey, we want to give them a shirt that they actually really will wear. Yeah, dude. And our shirts are, uh, you know, next level 60, 40 blend or tri blend. And people really love the feel and the look and it's done really well. Well, Even when I'm fat, I still look good in the shirt. (laughs) That's why I buy it. Wait till you see the, the materials and the products we're coming out with. Yeah. It's, they're so sick. Fire. Yeah. Well, let's talk. When are when are they coming out? I'll give you a little because sneak peek. remember this won't air for a little bit. So <laughs> right. what's coming out? Uh, we're gonna get. We have uh, some some good materials for shirts, uh, mock golf shirts. Oh, cool! Uh, yeah. Gray golf hats. Uh, we have these new joggers that are coming out. We have a lot of female um, women's line coming out as and well. And the material is like a Lululemon's type style. Really? Yeah. Like it's really high quality that people love to wear. And, and stuff that you could wear when you're going out to eat, um, yep. you know, like that, that mock turtleneck and, and everything. It's great. Mock like color, to be yeah. mock color, literally I mean, yeah. to be on like Lulu's level. Oh yeah. Yeah. We want to, I mean, 
I, we're becoming more lifestyle brand and more people are becoming more tribal and they're always asking us, Hey, can you come out with this and this, yeah. you know, we'll post things about like, I got these Nike shoes that I just got custom done by a buddy of a buddy of mine. And I mean, people are like, I would buy those right now. I yep. don't care what it costs. I'd buy those in a second. So it, it's funny. Are loyal. It, I was going to say, it's funny how loyal they are. I, I don't know if it's the antlers or what it is, but people yeah. just seem to be come super loyal, you know, and, and again, maybe it's cause we don't necessarily go after all the celebs to try to get to rep us. We yeah. go after all these micro. regular micro influencers that, that can help us push and promote yeah. us. And we're, we're speaking to them. I mean, that's who our customers are. We're not all, I mean, look at me and Ryan, we're not yeah. big me, you know, muscle guys. I mean, you are pretty jacked. Let's I mean, thank you. be honest. Thank For you. those that are not watching, <laughs> but listening. This sweatshirt now Ryan. they're going to go look at a picture of Ryan's, me. Thanks. Appreciate Ryan's it. less jacked <laughs> yes. than you. Hey, that's, hey, guess what? Jeff posts on internet, uh, on, on his social media thing. And, and I just steal it. And I just, I just post it as me. <laughs> Benefits no of being a twin. Me. Benefits no, of being no, a twin. No one can tell. Um, that's no, that's great. Um, there was something you were saying there that I want to, I want to circle back on, um, you know, I think, I think what the loyalty is too, is like, I don't think it happens without having amazing products. Like, look, I, I know I'm, I know I'm doing a lot of tooting of the horn today, but like, I've been a, I've been a real consumer, an avid consumer of bucked up products now for years. And it's like, it's hard to go away from because now you've got me from so many angles. So it's like, yeah. okay, let's say I find a, another pre-workout that I like. Well, I also happen to like the buckshot. It's better than yeah. five hour. Mm -hmm. I also happen to like the apparel. So I'm still like, even if I yeah. go away from something, you still have me over here. Right. And that's where innovation comes in. Right. Yeah. And, I mean, that's what and you know, we realize like not everyone's going to take the same pre-workout forever, Yeah. but we want them to try other ones and, and, and come of course back. we want them to yeah. come back. And what's been nice is people have tried a lot of other ones and they all come back saying, man, I, I, I just, y your flavors, and the performance, it's really good. Some people will go, yep. hey, this product isn't, you know, doesn't have, you know, totally jacked something. And we're like, hey, but it works. That's yep. the thing. We're not here to try and kill someone. We're, we want products that actually work. Yep. Well, and we want it to work for everyone. Speaking of not trying to kill someone, we are coming out with a product that's going to get, like, we're trying to push it just a little. <laughs> Like Jack 3D. Uh, and since Jack this is Black. coming out, this yeah. since really? this is coming out in a couple months, yeah. we'll yeah. let you have it. It's called Mother Bucker. And, and it's, it's the very, mother of all pre-workouts. Pre and we've jacked up this, the, the beta alanine to be like, what, six grams? Yeah, 6.4, the clinical study. Now you'll be on fire. You're tingling. It's You're mother tingling, Bucker, but dude. It'll buffer lactic acid <laughs> like crazy. <laughs> yeah, but we we we've added some really awesome like Hydra Prime, Nitrosogen, a whole bunch of products that help with pump, endurance, strength. You're gonna go through the roof with this product. So what's regulated and what's not? Like, are, are you? We know we know those. How we, far can you go? Is, well, is this like right on the edge? Yeah. Like so, for instance, people are like, "Hey, you need to come up with something stronger." And I'm always the type that says, well, it's time for you to take a break because yeah. as your body, tolerance, it, oh, because yeah. people build up a tolerance to not only caffeine, but they also build up a tolerance to uh, nitric oxide. So, uh, you know, like ingredients like uh, citrulline. citrulline or arginine or these pump ingredients yeah. like glycer pump, these are all pr ingredients that cause vasodilation. After you take them for a while, they become less effective. And so you kind of need to allow them to flush out of your system. Or you take something like L-lysine that helps regulate, um, you know, nitric oxide. But you do those things. But, you know, it's always good to take a break from caffeine and nitric oxide altogether. Well, great. Now I got to take a break and we just released, we just released <laughs> cherry candy and somehow I'm addicted to our own stuff. Yeah. I mean, like I cannot stop drinking it. Yeah. It's cherry candy is really good. Very surprising. One of those. I'm going to go back to the office. Uh, I will get you one. And, okay. and it's surprising. Like I was like, I love sour, sour gummy. I don't think anything can beat it. And all of a sudden we come out with cherry candy, cherry candy? and of That's all like flavors. Well, it's like a cherry, a... it's like a cherry Jolly, Jolly Rancher, Rancher, but we can't say Jolly Rancher. Oh, but, but it's right. cherry candy. It's the best one we have come out with. Well, a lot of people really, really like, I mean, we've had 
unreal reviews on that, yeah. uh, on the cherry. How candy. long has it been out? One, One month. month. Wow. And we've already sold. <laughs> yeah, I mean, one of our ambassadors tried it and they bought five bottles. Yeah. Cause they're afraid it's going to be ambassadors. out. Yeah. <laughs> but you have some. And I, I do have the some. exclusive has, club. Yeah. You, I know a guy. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff's got some Dude. stockpiled somewhere, I guarantee you. Yep. I love it, man. This is this is amazing. I, I'm loving this conversation. Let I want to talk about this ambassador program that you guys have built. I'm blown away. I, I thought, if you would have said, how many ambassadors do you think we have? I would have said, like, I don't know, 2,000. Like, I would have said a big mm-hmm. number. Like, 2,000. Like, the fact that you're at 60... How many of these people are like real ambassadors? Right, right. He'll get. I mean, generally speaking, with any business, ten percent of the people do ninety percent of the volume. Yeah, and that's that's somewhat true with everything, and including our ambassador program, we have like ten percent of those people really pushing, yeah. making money, because uh, they get twenty percent off when they use their code or their link, yeah. but they make twenty percent as well, commission uh, in commission. So. I mean, it's a total discount of roughly around 40% yeah. because they're giving the customer 20% and they make 20%. Yep. So, uh, you know, in the beginning, uh, we we had a, a, a guy with us and he was like, I don't think this ambassador thing is what we should be spending our time on. Mm-hmm. And instead, what we did was we paid some girl who had 600,000 followers to post about bucked up. Well, she got us five cells. We're like, we didn't even make our money back. Yeah, we, we paid did. her $500. And she got us five cents. And, and we mm. made probably $150 back. Yeah. So we're like, this this is kind of uh, crazy. And then this girl walks into our little office in American Fork, Utah, and says, hey, I have like 5,000 followers, but I'll, I'll buy it and I'll post about it. Is there a way to track it? We gave her a tracking link because we, we come from the affiliate marketing world. Yep. And she gets us 18 cells who and she has 5,000. I don't even remember don't who even it was. Remember. She wow. was going to Vasa. But I remember American Fork. it clicked as a light bulb in our head. We're like, heck oh, with all these celebrities. Let's go with yeah. all these micro influencers that can help us who have an authentic follower. And yeah. they're not just looking at her channel for yeah. to see how good she looks. Totally. So they proved it to us. And so what we did at that point was we said, what's our strategy on how to get these ambassadors to post about us who are regular people who work out that like our product Mm -hmm. and that could also help us and can make some money while they help us uh, rep our brand. And so we, we kind of had that next thing, you know, we would show up to expos and people would go, where did you guys come from? And what we did is we had a whole bunch of ambassadors all shouting us out. It's not what you say about your product. It's what everybody else says about your product. Of course, we're going to say, hey, we're ours the is the best. Yeah. We're the best. We got yeah. the best product. But the guy next to us is also saying the same thing. But when they start asking around and everybody's saying bucked up is really good, and then they start seeing everybody posting about bucked up, yeah, and really they're like, smart. wait, I want to try this. So we, we went hard at, at marketing for ambassadors, and we, and we were – even helping them by helping them grow their accounts and and using some software that that we had to grow it and and help help grow people's Instagram accounts and they became more marketable and then they were loving us because of that because we were helping them and you know a girl would post you know a booty pic and she'd get ten thousand followers all of a sudden <laughs> you know but but it's it's really. Uh, we we started at the ground level working with these micro influencers and helped them grow because that helped us grow. And like Ryan said, we didn't care what we said about ourselves. We we cared about what other people said and we didn't even concentrate on growing our own account. Yeah. We, yeah. That, we, that wasn't even a big a part of our focus. Yeah. So are, are, do you have competitors trying to replicate this model? Yeah, they, everybody tries. I yeah. mean, every, and, and we've gamified it. We've actually, Jeff created a, an app for us um, that's gamified where they can rank up in our system. And if they get four and five star ranks, we actually pay for their vacation with us. Oh, so you do this, and so, you do this trip every year. Yeah, we do a yeah. trip every year and they can, they can rank up. And if they get us into gyms and they earn enough commissions, then we take them on a trip. We'll get you a code. You can put this on I the podcast, no, no, I have one. And, and, and then let's get you on the on the free cruise this year. Dead, a, dead ass, hey, I have a code. So let's do it. You I'm going to talk t- about my code. Hold on, I'm, let me talk about my code. My code is is T Hall twenty, I think. Yep. Or Tyler T Hall twenty. 20. Yep. 
Get no, you twenty percent off. Sure. Okay, it's T Hall twenty. Twenty okay. percent off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going on this trip. Let's do it with the hey, boys. Just I'm actually so you know, going either way yeah, this time. You yeah, already right. told me. Right. Hey, I, I, my son just got off his mission. Listen to this. So he gets off his mission. What's a mission, by the way? So a mission is, you know, we're from Utah. There's the Mormon Church, um, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. He served a mission in Argentina. He comes back off his mission in the very next week. We go on this ambassador trip. Talk about welcome to the fire <laughs> and to the real world. Yeah. He sees these girls. I mean, we got some unreal ambassadors. Let's just say that. <laughs> yeah. But man, it was just like throwing them right out into the real world again. And he was just like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? You know, uh, coming from a mission. <laughs> broke them in quick. <laughs> broke them in real quick. Let's how, many, how many people earn that trip every year? Last year, we took about 80 people. Last oh, year. that's a lot. Yeah. yeah. So, so just last month, they probably did 750 grand on our website of revenue. Um, so about 650 yeah. grand worth of revenue. We do about 2 million or so a month on online. Oh, and they drove nearly and they half drove, of it. They drove wow. 40%. 40%. Yep. Yep. They drive a lot of the volume. How does somebody who's interested in becoming an ambassador do that? So what they do is go to the bottom of our website at buckedup.com. And there's a, a button there that says apply now. And they can apply to be an ambassador. And the only real thing they need to have is over a thousand followers on any social network. Okay. And essentially we we'll approve be... them if they are posting something related to fitness or outdoors or you know, everything that Bucked Up stands for, which is a, a wide gamut. You could yeah. you could basically post um, you know, any kind of lifestyle, any kind of thing and and team sports or whatever, and we'll we'll accept you as an ambassador. Amazing. And then what do you, what are some of the successful ambassadors doing to be successful? So the biggest thing that I, I, I really see that helps is when they talk to the camera with their face on it. So the real successful ones are just speaking to the camera. They're really used to it. They're, they're talking, they're, they're likable. They, they relate to people and people just want to hear what they have to say. Mm. And they're, they're authentic people. And then the second thing is, is I think they set up these link trees or beacons or something. And it gives a, a link to all of the things that they support. But those two things I think are the most crucial things that ambassadors who are successful are doing. And, and we try them, to train them, train other people how to do that. Yeah. And other people that have done really well have also got us into gyms. There is right. this one ambassador that comes on the trip every year with us. And he got us into 34 gyms. He approached one of the gyms and says, hey, you don't carry bucked up, but you really ought to carry bucked up. Who do I need to speak to about it? He gets them on the phone with my little brother, Dan, who runs our sales team. They ended up getting 34 gyms. Bucked up into thirty four gyms, and, he's and he making, crushes it. He's making three or four and you grand have a, way a month. To track and we have a way how to many sales. Yeah, every doing. time they order, he he gets a commission off what they. And he order. sees three it four thousand in cash, and a he month? sees it on his app in real time, wow. and he sees it on the app in real time. That's serious. Yeah. What's like some big home run distributors that you want, like partners like the GNCs or WalMarts of the world that you don't have that somebody on here might have a relationship with that can just print money. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's a good, that's a good. So any chain of, of like Bucky's loves Ooh, yeah. pilot, terrible herbs. Te yeah. yeah. You know, any of those chains would be good if we can get the distributor who supplies product to those people. Mm, okay. And you know, like we're, we're open to anything. I mean, now grocery stores are selling supplements and energy drinks and we're just crushing and crushing. They, like they're Harman's. just high volume stores. Are you guys in bashes in Arizona? No. Okay. Can you make that interaction? Can you make that connection? Hey, you so, are going on so the give ambassador me my code. Trip. Give me my code. <laughs> I'm going to go talk to Tyson Basha. I'm coming for you. He's the son of the the guy who started bashes and still yeah, works in the business. Exactly. So. You just make the introduction. We will do the rest. We'll Fantastic. show them the numbers. We have the data. And when they bring us in, we'll show them how well it sells. I will send this clip to Tyson and say, watch just this 10 seconds. Let's go. I want to go on a trip it. and then we'll make it happen. Let's do all it. All right, cool. We just did a deal. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> all right. I want to, I know a little bit about the inception of the company and your guys' upbringing. I want to talk about that because I think it's really fascinating. I think people are going <laughs> to love it. So maybe share with me what you guys did prior to Bucked Up and then how Bucked Up became a thing. Okay. Well, you know, you know, what's interesting is, is 
our father was a farmer. We grew up on a farm. We were hard working. Clearfield, right? Utah. And I mean, even from this age when we were, you know, there's no millionaire mindset, you know, podcasts or yeah. social media things and things. But I think one of the biggest things is our dad taught us to think positive and have this certain mindset that we work hard, but we feel like success will happen. So when we went on our missions, he made us say, I am enthusiastic and successful every day. So we had it on our mirror, on our mirror. and we say, I'm enthusiastic and successful. I am enthusiastic and successful Dude, seven cool. times every day. Gives and this chill. farmer, in our mind, we said that every day when we were in the mirror getting ready to and go this out and farmer, do missionary work who comes from Clearfield, Utah, didn't know anything about mindset or positive thinking. No, he didn't. Know. He taught us that. So we, we always have the, the mindset of we're not going to lose. We're going to win. And, uh, you know, it's, it's gone with us our whole life. And it seems like positive things happen to positive people. And yeah. we've always thought positive. In fact, some of the new guys that come aboard, they're like, you guys are the most positive people. Like you think you're going to rule mm. the world. And we're like, well, I mean, maybe. <laughs> well, so. you know, a couple of things he taught us is, is we never have a fear of loss. So, you know, there's, there's these solar companies and sales floors and everything else. And, you know, they asked us like, Hey, what, what do you think we could tell our guys? And, and it's like, Hey, if, if somebody ever wanted to came to bucked up and then left, you know, we'd wish them the best of luck. Maybe it's greener on the other side, but we never have a fear of loss of losing somebody yeah. or and, losing that. Never break bri burn bridges. We, we never like burn bridges. Um, and, and we just stay positive and we just don't have that fear that we're going to lose. We, we are competitive suckers. We're twins. Yeah. And, uh, we, we like to win. We like, we're very competitive and we'll do whatever it takes. So we're willing yeah. to work hard to do that. Now, our dad did teach us how to work really hard. And if we didn't work hard, we got our butts kicked. Yeah. You know, so. Or we feel worthless. So, and we, he said, so, I'm not raising any worthless kids. That's which is his probably tagline. the worst thing you could probably <laughs> right. say. I love your dad. I, I've met your dad. <laughs> yeah. and he's just the, oh, yeah. he's the best, man. He's yeah. hilarious. So you guys started your first company. I mean, what's it been, 20 years together? What was the yeah, first time you guys so, went into business? Um, More than that. So really... Um, I came down to go to school down here and I had some missionary buddies say, Ryan, you need to come over to the sales floor. We're calling on leads of people who went to a seminar and we call and we upsell them coaching and mentoring. So we would call on these leads and say, Hey, we want to walk you by the hand. We want to take you by the hand and walk you down this path and show you exactly what to do and help you make multiple streams of income online or with real estate or whatever. And within two hours, we had sell them a package anywhere from 5,000 to $20,000. And I finally realized the guy who's making all the money is the guy producing the lead. Well, one day one of the lead providers came in and I said, Hey, you're making good money. Let's go to the auction. I have my dealer's license. Let's buy you a Mercedes. Well, why we were there, guess what I did? I asked him for a job. I was like, Hey, I don't want to be on the phone the rest of my life. I took a risk and said, Hey, don't tell my guys at work, but I don't want to be on the phone for the rest of my life. I want to learn how to do what you're doing, which is producing leads for these floors. And he's like, I, you, you couldn't have asked at a better time. I have no clue what I'm doing. I'm sticking a, a banner on a free lotto site. And I know that every time they have to pick numbers, they have to click on my banner. Every 100 of them come and buy my program. One of and them that's buys the leads it. I'm giving you. And I don't know how to do anything else. Come down and learn how to do it with me. I'm like, fine. When do you want me? He's like, tomorrow. I'm like, okay. Went home, told my wife that where we just barely got married. Babe, I quit my job. We're moving to St. George. She freaked out. It was like, you're kidding, right? And we moved to St. George. We took a risk, moved to St. George. I learned how to produce leads, came back up and said to Jeff, Jeff, we got to start this affiliate marketing business and, and we got to drive traffic. And we were no lie, three years ahead of everyone. At least three years. This is 2001. Yeah. And, and, oh, it, yeah, and yeah. for 2002 and, and 2003 and four, that's when other people started to learn how to do it. They were like, what are they doing? And, and we had figured already it figured it out by then. And we were already steps ahead. And just like with bucked up, that's what we try to do is stay steps ahead. Yep. So, so people would come to us with a product or a service and they would say, Hey, could you drive traffic to 
get me more sales? And we said, of course. So what we would do is we'd say, hey, you know this product? It's going to cost you $40 for every sale we get you. And we would just turn around to our affiliate network and we'd say, hey, we'll pay you $32 for every sale. But that's not all we did because these people would come and oh. they would have the worst looking websites and no, they didn't know how to convert. And we're like, we're consultants. You need yeah. to set it up this way. You need to fix the page. And we basically did what they call click funnels nowadays. And, and when Back they the started day. doing they click, click funnels, funnels, we're like, what? They're they calling call it click, click funnels. This is what we've been doing for the last six, seven years. But the guy knew how to market and he, he came out and called it a click, click funnel. Yeah, now Russell everybody yeah, is doing it yeah. right. Yeah. So. so you guys did that business together. And then at some point you had an idea. Well, that's pretty wild. Yeah. How, yeah how so that what happened is this. Up? My dad was taking a product called L Arginine Plus. And my dad went to the guy and goes, this is a great product. Everybody should have this. How many sales are you doing? He goes, I'm doing about six or $700 a day in sales. I'm doing really good. He's like, you need to talk to my boys. They'll put you on steroids. And so he came down and visited us. And within one meeting, we owned 50% of the company. He was to supply the product and we did all the marketing. Wow. And within three weeks, we were doing over $3,000 a day. Then we went out and we found that there was a website, there was a domain name available, and it was larginine.com. And at the time, Google gave precedence to people who put in the exact match domain. So the exact match of what they put in popped to the top mm -hmm. immediately. Mm -hmm. And we ended up saying, do we really want to buy this domain name? We need to get it. It's ranking number one. So we find out who owns this domain name and they're in the UK. And we said, we want to buy your domain name. And he says, it's not for sale. And we said, come on, come on. Every, everything's for yeah. sale. And he goes, all right, 25 grand just to buy our, my name, larginine.com. And, and that's we when we asked, other, we're like, like should we do, do we... this? And then we're like, yeah, let's go. And we buy it for 25 grand. Well, about two or three months later, Google turns off all the pay-per-click listing for things that, can, that basically help with mm -hmm. nitric oxide. L-arginine, uh, nitric oxide, erectile dysfunction, everything like this, they turn off all the paper. So guess who's that. ranking number one and gets all of the clicks? We do. L-arginine.com. And we were just with that one product, we were making three, four million a year just on the one product. And Easy. it wasn't even on auto ship. It, everybody had to come back and buy it over and over. Crazy. It, and it was just right there as we knew the domains and, and how we do that. That's what set us off. And then shortly after that, we read an article in Sports Illustrated that said Major League Baseball bans deer antler spray. And we were like, deer antler spray? What is that? Is that a hunting product? So we quickly went to GoDaddy, looked up deer antler spray. It was available for eight bucks. So I think it was six ninety nine. Six ninety nine at yeah. the time. Yeah, we bought it. <laughs> bye, we bye. immediately bought. And we were like, this is another home run. This is another L arginine that we have on our hands. Well, we end up, I found, found a guy in Florida that sourced all of the deer antler velvet extract that he puts in the spray and he manufactured about 3,500 bottles for us, which was the MOQ and said, Hey, this is the minimum amount that you can purchase. We bought 3,500 and we put it up thinking we had a, a gold mine on our hand. Yeah. It sold about 10 to 12 bottles a day. Hardly anybody read Sports Illustrated. Mm. They they they're looking at it for the swimsuit issue, I believe. So, <laughs> yeah, so, not deer antler, not, not, deer, not for the articles. Let's put it that way. It, and we thought we had we were going to have to take this horse out back and kill it. Um, you know, we thought we we were just hoping to sell it before it expired. And about five months later, five six yeah, months about, later, yeah. it was uh, Super Bowl Media Week, and somebody's interviewing, and they say. Hey, Ray, how did you recover from your tricep tear in three weeks so that you could play in the Super Bowl? Ray Lewis was one of the all-star football players that played for the Baltimore Ravens. <laughs> yeah, of course. And if you don't got him, accused <laughs> of taking deer antler spray right before be to, to help repair his tricep. And, and so we come into the office and there is 100 cells of deer antler spray. And we're like, where did where did this come from? Is this... Is this legit? Is, yeah, these is it fraud? Is fraud it orders? And another five minutes, another hundred orders. And we're like, what what's going, going on? on? Somebody calls us on the phone and says, turn on ESPN right now. And 
every five minutes, it was the biggest talk of the town that Ray Lewis takes a banned substance called deer antler spray. It's banned in all professional and, and NCAA sports and blah, blah, blah. But the average person can take it. And every five minutes. So we mark it up from $39 to 59. Cause we're like, this, this thing isn't going to slow. And we mark it up to 79. Doesn't slow it down. And for the rest of the day, we sold it at $99 a bottle until we had sold all basically 2,600 bottles that we yeah, had Yeah, there left. was about 2,600 bottles left, and we sold all 2,600 bottles. And because we had the domain name, deerantlerspray.com, people were typing in deer antler spray, and guess, we, we obviously yeah. came up you first. You just collected all that And traffic. we collected all that traffic. Hey, we had a great logo. We had great <laughs> colors. So GNC hits us up, you know, the next, next, day. next day. It basically says, how fast can you get us? you know, bottles in our store and we'll bypass bottles. all red tape. No we won't way. even go through the oh, legal yeah. process. We have everybody asking for it and we like Everybody's your colors. In. We like your branding. How fast can you get it? So Ryan calls up our supplier. Yeah. And I was like, Hey, this is Ryan with deer antler spray. He's like, yeah, I thought I'd be hearing from you. How many do you need? And I'm like, I need 30,000 bottles. He's like, how fast? I'll get them to you in three weeks. And so that's how it started. And we got into GNC within three weeks. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And then of course we stuck with the deer theme. And we, we, we actually asked, we started getting some ambassadors at that point and we asked, we, we just put it out there and said, what should we call this? And somebody said, Hey, call it like bucked up. And we're like, dude, that's, that's, that's kind really of a catchy. catchy name. Let's, let's go check it out. We go to Thank GoDaddy. Sure it's enough. for sale for $1,500 or you can bid on it and try to like negotiate. Well, we're not dumb. We bought domain names for like 25 like, grand before. So we said, bye. We didn't even question it. No negotiation, nothing. Bought it right then. And so we bought buckedup.com and that's when it was born. And then in January of 2016, we took it to the first LA Fit Expo and sold 1,000 bottles in we, the first We had 1,000 bottles I mean, made. Our, manufa our local manufacturer all. said, hey, I'll do you a favor. I'll give you the same price as if you're buying 10,000 bottles. I'll sell, I'll, I'll sell you a, you know, I'll, I'll manufacture a thousand at a $10,000 price just to see. And we went to the LA fit expo and sold all 1000 bottles that very weekend. Wild. Were you, you so, were doing samples at the yeah, LA we fit were expo? Doing, well, we just had a shaker and we were pouring them in the little cups. <laughs> yeah. Said, here yeah, you cool. go. Um, it was old school. We actually little borrowed, sacrament cups. we actually bought, bought, yep. bought we actually borrowed. <laughs> you borrowed a, some from the, we, we borrowed. Took some from the church. <laughs> we borrowed some, uh, a shaker from another competitor. They were giving out free shakers. We took their shaker and we were mixing our stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah so people beginning. could try it. It's awesome. So it was awesome. It was good. Man, I love that. And and I mean, since then you've just crushed, right? But let's let's talk about, given the theme of the podcast, it's called a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. And so obviously I think we've talked about a lot of, a lot of bright sides, a lot of positivity, which is great but no great business is built just going up, right? So what are what are some of the, maybe describe a time where you went through one of these days where maybe you woke up and everything was seemingly amazing. And by the end of that day, everything was seemingly not. We have lots of those. We have, a, I mean, honestly, we get, you know, uh, um, we would, I remember one time when we went to a subway and my daughter was wearing a bucked up shirt and the guy behind the counter goes, Hey, do you know bucked up? And she's like, yeah. And she looks at me and says, dad, tell him who you are. And I'm like, I'm the janitor. We clean up a lot of crap around here, around at, at bucked up. And really we're putting out fires a lot of the time. Yeah. You know, there's a lot, the bigger it gets, the more complex it gets as well. Yeah. And so we're constantly, Jeff and I, I mean, it, what's nice is there's two of us. Yeah. yeah, It's like having two CEOs. Just think if you had two of you and how much you could get done. That's how it is with us. Yeah. And we're able to get a lot of stuff done because we have different roles and we're able to help put out fires in all these different aspects and all these different places. I mean, ambassadors will be complaining and saying, hey, my link isn't working. Well, Jeff can fix that. It doesn't have to come back on me. Mm -hmm. You know, and so we're doing constantly doing all of those things. But, you know, when it comes to like, you know, some pitfalls, you know, we've had the drinks that we've had to destroy. We had to do a big major recall on Buck Bar. So not everything goes your way in business in general. Well, we, we did have a big one. Oh, and okay, that's what? when, you know, COVID hit. Oh, yeah. GNC shuts down 700 stores. And then more than that, I think they shut down like 
1,500 stores. And, and then they declare bankruptcy on us and they owed us $2.1 million. Mm. And, and we they were like, weren't, we, th- we thought, oh, that's, that's going to be a hard one to it's handle. It's going to be a stinger. It's going to, it's going to sting. And, you know, we were like, well, I guess we, we're not selling to you anymore. Um, because they still wanted the product. They were, they sold probably $20 million of, of our product and that didn't year. pay us. I was actually ironically in your office, like when this was going down, uh, yeah. I was yeah. sitting in your office with mm-hmm. both of you mm-hmm. and you were describing this, like, I don't know how we're going to tell the company. Like yeah, I remember it was, it was pretty it was bad. Yeah. And I serious. swore up and down. I was like, I will never sell to GNC ever again. I will never, <laughs> those guys ripped us off. You know, I, I was yeah. swearing up and down, like I will never sell to GNC again. And, you know, at that time we said, you know what we need to do? We need to control our own destiny. Let's open up our own stores and distribute to our own stores. So immediately we opened like five stores. We just took action. And we- Retail it, stores. Retail yeah. stores that we could d- provide our own product and apparel and accessories to our own stores. It, and we were going to do a proof of concept showing how successful these stores were and then franchise it. And, you know, those five stores ball it out, took off mm-hmm. and that concept works. But when these new guys came in to help us, you know, we strategize had a new bandwidth, you know, for they're bandwidth. like, yeah. guys, stop focusing on stuff. We need to focus on velocity, moving the needle in a big way. So that's, that's kind of what happened. And, and otherwise we'd have a lot of stores, but the good thing about GNC taking us for a ride, we had to figure out how to transition out of that. And we went to just straight online, straight, uh, focus on our, our, our online sales. Mm -hmm. And, and from that point on, we didn't look back and you know what, at first GNC kind of had a majority of our, our sales. Yeah. Now they, they have a one little piece of it. Yeah. You realize and now you we're versatile. They were like yeah. 30 to 40% of our volume. Oh, wow. And now when, when they went away, we we're like, oh my gosh, this is going to be a big hit. But then we figured out and transitioned to doing different things. So it worked out for and, the better for And us. COVID was actually good because it got people not going into stores. Oh, and they wanted to be healthy. And they still want to be healthy. Buy supplements. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a matter of like making lemonade out of lemons right but it's like we 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 don't have a fear of loss but we always are looking at the 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 positive side of things and we 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 try to attract that into our space you know yeah i mean i'm sure a lot of people listening are going well 2.1 million who cares these guys are printing money seemingly every but it's like no, two point one million of that can really mess oh, it can things hinder up the progress of a business. Right? Yes, and then to be able to grow your business, you need that cash to be yeah. able to grow your business. And yeah. Jeff and I, we've bootstrapped this from the very beginning. Never, we've never taken on money. We've never taken. We've debt. never gone in debt. We've still to this day, we've never gone in debt into our business. Amazing. So crazy. It's 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 been a really good business. Why did you Why did you guys decide to get back in bed with GNC after that happened? I mean, you're doing this gold bottle thing, good right? Question. So so GNC really wanted us back in, and I was saying, nope, nope, you screwed us. Until you pay us the two million dollars, we ain't t- touching it. Interesting. And they were like, we're a different company. We went through bankruptcy. It's held by somebody else. And I'm like, all right, tell you what, you prepay us, and we're gonna charge you a little bit more per bottle. I'm going to get it out of you one way or the other. Yeah. And so they finally agreed because cool. they had so many people coming into GNC going, Hey, do you guys have bucked up? They'd go, no, we're out of bucked up. But you can and try this. You can try this. And they go, Nope. They'd walk I'll right to, out. I'll the go store. To, I'll go to and they went shop. to vitamin shop <laughs> yeah. and vitamin shop that year did oh, over $20 million yeah. in revenue with bucked up. So yeah. it was just a, a super good thing for even vitamin shop loved us because yeah. we, they got all of our volume. It's they amazing. got all the volume for that. So we we decided to go back with GNC and it's been a really, really good decision going back. And we do a lot, a lot of volume with them. Yeah, that's great. Look, I want to wrap on one very important debate. You guys are twins. I mean, I'm stronger. Yes. Uh, I, have, I, have, I have two questions. Who, who is, who lifts more weight? That uh, would be me. Okay. Uh, Josh. Can you, you can confirm that? Okay. I can confirm that. Who is generally considered more handsome? Uh, uh, we get confused so often. Like, honestly, uh, we get confused so much. It's like, I don't think that's relevant because 
if we were that far, like one was better looking than the other, then they would we wouldn't even get confused. Do I need to take my jacket off? Are you getting hot? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> getting hot. <laughs> no. But we get confused enough that I'm like, I could care less. They're like, a person will come up to me and go, hey, are you the fat twin or the skinny <laughs> twin? And I'm like, well, if, if you, can't, you tell. Don't, can't tell, I don't have <laughs> much to worry about. Right. Right. <laughs> He's not. He, this guy's been working out. Now we're oh. really close, actually. Yeah. We went to this thing the other are day. Yeah, we're really close. Uh, yeah, really. Yeah, dude, so, I haven't, I haven't seen. Well, you my so, my son came home from his mission, and he wants to work out every day. Yeah. So oh, he's okay. forced me to kind of like, <laughs> hey, I'm not going to allow my kids to beat yeah, me at this yeah, age. Yeah. I got to really push it. So uh, we went to this. Where were we? Where where everybody asked us probably no lie thirty times in about two hours. Yeah. Who's if we who? were twins. Oh. Yeah. No, no, they're like, <laughs> Just, hey, like you guys. You guys, you guys were like twins. Like, oh no, it was the NBA All Star Weekend. Oh yeah, uh, we went yeah. up to the to Salt Lake and we went to a couple parties and people were like, "You guys look exactly the same." And we so the cousin thing started. Yeah, yeah. cousins. Yeah, we're cousins. <laughs> you know how we do. It. <laughs> hey, look, I love you guys. Thank you for coming on the show. This was very entertaining, and I think people are going to find uh, this entertaining and valuable so thanks for being well, here. appreciate you having us on thank yeah. you for having us thank you for the support keep buying that bucked up product <laughs> come on in we'll get you some you got <laughs> we'll it, hook it up you you gave us enough shout outs come on in you got it thank you for joining another episode of the roller coaster podcast really excited that we had jeff and ryan gardner the founders of bucked up on the show today and hopefully you found this podcast entertaining and informative three things that i wanted to share three key learnings from the episode number one positivity wins. Hopefully you can see with these guys, these guys are like the happiest, most positive guys ever. But I don't think you should mistake positivity and kindness for weakness. I think these guys are also great leaders. They're very bold. But but always having a positive outlook on life is going to get you ahead. Number two, you got to disrupt yourself. Even when things are going amazing in your business or in your life, you always have to be reinventing yourself. You always have to be thinking about what are new ways that we can get ahead and continue to win. And number three, you got to take risks and you got to bet on yourself. When they spent $25,000 early on on larginine.com, that was a big, that was a big gamble. It was a big risk, but ultimately it paid off. And I think these things always do when you do that. So thank you for joining another episode of the Roller Coaster Podcast. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.